greater than 1. So you're not really sure what that means right now, and that's okay. Today we're going to focus on when we have a polynomial with four terms. Anytime we're factoring a polynomial, we want to make sure we factor it completely. That means that when we get our final factored form, there's nothing more that can be factored out of any of the factors. If there is, is we need to factor that out. Uh, so, something to keep in mind. So factoring by grouping. We're going to use that when there are four terms, and it's a process that can sometimes help. Sometimes we can't use it. Today we're going to give you situations where you can, where it will be factorable using this method. Here are the five steps. I'm going to actually skip reading them right now. Let's actually look at a problem and then read through the five steps. So first of all, as we look at example number one here, we want to make sure that it's written in uh, standard form. So the highest exponent first or the highest degree first, and then going down from there. And that is true. Factor out a greatest common factor, if possible, like we've been practicing. Well, number-wise, the coefficient here is 1. So that means I can't factor out anything bigger than 1, and we don't factor out 1s. So there's not a GCF to factor out for numbers. Variable-wise, this has an x, this has an x, this has an x, but this does not have an x. So there is no GCF to factor out here. Now, since there are four terms, we've factored out the GCF, which didn't actually happen. If it is factorable by grouping, and if you've taken out the greatest common factor, then what we have left is in the two parentheses. Oops, I skipped step three. <laughs> put parentheses, so after we look for a GCF, we're going to put parentheses around the first two terms. And the last two terms. So it'll look like this. Now there is a special note here that if the third term is subtracted, we need to add the opposite. And I'll show you what that means in a second. Now we're going to factor out the GCF of each parentheses. So looking at this first set of parentheses, what can I factor out? I can factor out an x squared. I'm left with inside of these parentheses x plus 2. I'm going to change the colors here, see if this makes this a little more fun. So now here's the second set of parentheses, the last two terms in, of the four terms. What can I factor out here? A 3. So I'm going to bring the plus sign down and factor out a 3. I'm left with x plus 2. If this is factorable by grouping, which today it will be. And if you've taken out the greatest common factor, which is for us to make sure we're doing, that's something to double check sometimes as we're going, then what is left in the two parentheses should be identical. Huh, what's left in the two parentheses should be identical. Does this match with that? Yes, it does, and it should. If it doesn't, again, maybe it's not factorable, but today they will be, and if so then if it doesn't match, we should have factored something else out or we factored incorrectly somehow. So it's a great way to know if you're on the right step or not. So then last thing, put the GCFs, that's our x squared and, and positive 3 here, put them in one set of parentheses. So x squared plus 3. Boom. And multiply it by the binomial that had a match. So in these parentheses, you should have two terms always, binomial, meaning two terms, and they should match. That's what we multiply this parentheses by, so x plus 2. You can just think of it as taking one of these things and dragging it straight down. There is our factored form. If we were to foil this back together or distribute this, we should end up with exactly what we started with up here. Bada bing, bada boom. This is our factored form. Notice we can't factor anything out else out of each of these bin or either of these binomials. So this is factored form. There we are. Let's try that with example number two. It's in standard form. 
I cannot factor a number out of those four terms, nor can I factor out a variable because this one doesn't have a variable. So now we go on to putting parentheses around the first two terms and the last two terms, but hold on. If the third term is subtracted, add the opposite. Here's an example. If, if this third term right here is being subtracted, we need to now change it to adding a negative. That negative, in this case the negative 3, needs to be inside of those parentheses that we're creating. So here I'm going to add the opposite. I'm going to make a big negative sign there. And then when I add my parentheses, I'm going to carve it perfectly in between the negative sign and the plus sign. That wasn't perfect, but it's good enough. So here we go. What can I factor out of that first parentheses? Well, they have a c to the 4 and a c to the 3. Remember, we want the greatest common factor, so I can factor out c to the 3. That leaves me with, and it, sometimes on these it's easier just to think about distribution. c to the 3rd times what is c to the 4th? c, or c to the 1. Drop down the plus sign. c to the 3rd times what is c to the 3rd? That's silly, because this is c to the 3rd, and we want it to be c to the 3rd. Well, what we need to multiply it by is 1. Anything times 1 is itself, so c to the 3rd times 1 is c to the 3rd. I'm going to drop down the plus sign here. Now, what can I factor out of a negative 12c and a negative 12? Hmm, 12, right? However, we can do better than that, and in fact, it needs to match these two terms. What's left in the parentheses needs to match what's left over here. So instead of just a 12, I'm going to factor out a negative 12. Check this out. When I factor out a negative 12, I'm left with a positive c. And when I factor a negative 12 off of this, I'm left with a positive 1. Again, here's where we can add the opposite, and maybe you believe that a little bit better. I'm dropping down a plus sign and negative 12 divided by negative 12 is positive 1. If you don't believe it still, and that's fine, distribute this back in. You get negative 12c plus negative 12. So I, I, I agree with what I've factored out, and I especially agree with it because we need these two binomials that are in the parentheses to match. We have c plus 1 and c plus 1. That is good. If it, if it doesn't match, we need to look at what we factored. So we've got c to the third plus negative 12. Those are our GCFs. And then we put that c plus 1, the matching binomials, gets multiplied by our GCFs. So we just bring one of those down and we multiply them. So this is our, this is our answer in factor form. If this is a summative or if you just want to make sure it's right, you don't on a double check, which is a good thing to do, you would FOIL this or multiply these two binomials back together like we were doing a couple weeks ago. Let's try a couple more. Alright, so this is in standard form. Check. This is, does not have any GCFs. Oof, close, but not. I was thinking 6 for a while because uh, I was thinking 5. All four terms have to have a number that goes into them if we're factoring out a greatest common factor for numbers and all of them or all of them have to have b's and this one doesn't have a b so all right put parentheses around the first two terms and here's that minus sign for the third term that's the one term that we just got to be careful on so i'm going to add the opposite and that 24 is negative so when i add my or i put in my second set of parentheses around the third and fourth term make sure we identify that it's a negative 24b all right, GCF time out of these two. Um, B to the third. I can't factor a number out of those two. So I'm left with 6B plus 5. Again, if it helps to show division, oops, B to the third divided by B to the third for each of those. When these two battle, I'm left with B to the one. Over here, when I divide this by b to the third, I get 5. And then b to the third divided by b to the third, the, no b on the top or bottom wins that battle. They eliminate each other. Then, 
dividing by what can we factor out here? I'm thinking a negative five, negative five. No, just kidding. Five doesn't go into that silly goose. Negative four. So I'm going to drop a plus sign down. I'm going to factor out a negative four, which means I'm dividing everything by negative four. And I'm thinking negatives because I realize both terms over here are positives. And since these are both negatives, I need to undo the negative by dividing by a negative. So let's see here. The first term in this binomial, I get 6b. Hey, that's good. That matches this one. I'm probably on the right path. And here I have negative 20 divided by negative 4. That's 5. Do our binomials match? You bet. They match. So now we rewrite our GCFs, the things we factored out, together. As a binomial, we put parentheses around it. And instead of writing b to the third plus negative 4, we can write b to the third minus 4. And then multiply that by one of your matching binomials. So 6b plus 5. Bada bing, bada boom. And I'm just kind of doing a quick check here. If I work backwards, I get, it uh, doesn't matter which way to go here, but when I multiply these two together, I get negative 20. That's good. When I multiply the insides together right here, I get negative 24b. That's good. When I multiply b to the third with 6b, I get 6b to the fourth. And when I multiply b to the third times 5, I get 5b to the third. So we've got all the terms there. That's good. Last example. No GCF. Uh, oh, you know what? Uh, it's in a goofy standard form. This is supposed to be 3y to the third. I'm pretty sure. Let's change that. Let's do 3y to the third. So then let's hug our first two terms. Oh, that y squared is really important. And now let's add the opposite because the third term is being subtracted. So we'll add the opposite, which means when we carve our second set of parentheses, it's a negative 21. So here we go, factoring out what we can out of these two. We can factor out a y squared. So what's left in the parentheses? 3y and you could multiply there to double check to make sure it's equivalent it is. And then here's that one that sometimes is confusing. When we get y squared divided by y squared, we get 1. You can double check that y squared times 1 is y squared. So there's our factored form of that first binomial. Now what can we factor out of this one? So this one's a little bit tricky. Remember, it needs to match. So I, you're probably thinking a 7. That'd be a good thing to think. However, when we factor a 7 out, look at the signs of our terms. In this binomial, which is supposed to match this one, we have a positive number and then a negative. Whereas in this one, it's opposite. We have a negative number and then a positive. When that happens, divide by a negative number to switch the signs. So when I divide by a negative 7 here, or when I factor out a negative 7, when I find out what's left in here, which is needs to match with this, when I have a negative 21y divided by a negative 7, I get a positive 3y. And when I divide a positive 7 by a negative 7, I get a negative 1. Hey, that's good. Now it does perfectly match. So that's one of those caveats. If you're not dividing by the right number, or you're not factoring out the right number, you're... you're binomials that are supposed to match won't, and if your signs are off, but otherwise the numbers are the same, divide by a negative instead, and that will switch them. So it should hopefully match that. So let's put it together. Let's take our GCFs and put them together as a binomial in parentheses, and instead of y squared plus negative 7, I'm going y squared minus 7. means the same thing. looks a little bit nicer. And then bring your matching binomial down and multiply it by that. There we go. Final answer. We could check it real quick mentally. And we're 
looking good. Yeah, even this last one, check it out, negative 7 times.